All right, everybody. Welcome to the new Jerry Jones Experience Series, where we'll be taking on a new franchise in the NFL. Xavier Klein was introduced in last week's video, and now it is time for us to reveal which NFL franchise he will take on. It will be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This team was kind of left in a little bit of disarray with the retirement of one of the GOATs, Tom Brady. And now that he's gone, other pieces have fallen to the wayside. The goal is, can we take this team a little step further towards NFL Dynasty? Let's break down this roster. You know, when you look at this O-line here, you have Cody Mock, Matt Feeler, Ryan Jensen, Ainsey, and Wirfs. But the tight end group no longer has a Gronkowski. It's just led by Kate Otten. They drafted Durham uh, this year. The wide receiver group is quite strong when you got Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. But behind them, you're talking about Russell Gage Jr. and the new rookie here in Trey Palmer. The running back group, all about being elusive. So we'll kind of see how this will work out here with Chase Edmonds, Ricard White, and Keyshawn Vaughn leading that. The big component here that we're going to have to pay attention to is what will we do in the quarterback position? Baker Mayfield is there uh, with Kyle Trask as his backup, but I'm not really sure if we're going to keep him uh, or both of them at all. The defensive side is quite strong. The safety group has Antoine Winfield, but the linebacking group has Treon Shoyinka, Devin White, Levante David, and Shaq Barrett. Behind them is Yaya Diaby and Jose Ramirez, which I think are pretty good uh, gro uh, you know, rookies that can grow, along with Savasia Dennis. The corner group is actually pretty good with Carlton Davis and Jamal Dean, but we were able to grab Keely Ringo here on the free agency who was actually cut by the Philadelphia Eagles in the preseason. The uh, defensive line has uh, Kalijah Kansi, you got Greg Gaines and Vita Vea, who I think are pretty solid with uh, Logan Hall and uh, uh, Anthony Nelson there as backups. So I'm hoping uh, this squad will be great and we'll kind of work through it. The first game will be against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, rather than walking you through the game uh, play by play, I wanted to make sure that we just kind of focus on three key areas. I want to look at the quarterback position, seeing if there's any opportunities there, the strengths of our team, and maybe a potential under the radar kind of rookie. When you look at these highlights here with Baker Mayfield, you can clearly see that there is a huge, huge opportunity area. Consistent misses have been a factor in week one. One of the other things I recognize is Baker tends to hold on the ball a little bit more than he should to try to make the bigger plays, and he's paying for it with sacks. This O-line actually holds the defensive line quite well uh, in their place, but Baker takes too long to uh, develop decisions. And as you can see here, when he takes too long, it results in some INTs. There were uh, some okay kind of setups, but I just kept seeing late throws. He did have a nice touchdown here, but I think this was more Russell Gage Jr. than it was Baker Mayfield. Uh, but that was probably the only highlight I could see in this game for him. As we went deeper into this game, you can see Baker Mayfield here on these third and long plays, just not getting the playoff in time. And he's not sinking into the pocket because the defense is uh, trying to make the pressure off the edge. He's just not getting it done. The strength of the team by far and away is the defense. I see constant pressure coming through just rushing four men. We are recognizing right now that our edges have some great, great possibilities. As long as we can keep Shaq Barrett and Troy Inca healthy, it should be pretty strong throughout the rest of the season. I am also recognizing because of the pressure from the edges has everything to do with Vida Vea. And every time he's on the field, he creates a lot of chaos. I also see some very hard-hitting safety in Antoine Winfield, who I'm going to try to keep here for the long haul. 
Everywhere we tried to approach this very strong offensive line of the Cowboys, we met them head to head, just kept bringing on pressure time after time. Dak Prescott tried to hold on the ball a little longer than he probably should, but I would say that this defense is by far and away the best thing for us. We just have to keep them together. The big surprise for me was rookie Trey Palmer, who I didn't give him too many reps uh, from the outside, but I did give him reps in the slot, and he performed quite well behind Chris Godwin. Baker was looking for him time and time again due to the mismatches. They had some linebackers on him, and uh, he was just too fast and too quick uh, for anybody who was trying to match with them, knowing we had Mike Evans and Chris Godwin on the outside. He was definitely smart with kind of finding the holes in the zone. Um, but I'm hoping we could try to test him a little bit uh, throughout this season. Put him on the outside a little bit and maybe even have him mess with the uh, big plays um, when we need him to. Who knows if we decide to keep Mike Evans. But I'm definitely hoping that Trey Palmer can be a nice piece for us in the coming years. Only time will tell though, but I'm hopeful. In week two, it was a very low scoring game, heavy on the defense, and time and time again throughout this game, it was only our defense that kept us in this one. I kept seeing this team bend but not break constantly. And uh, no matter how tough Alvin Kamara was, his defense never stopped. They always kept coming. On this drive right here, on the one yard line, over and over again, his defense stayed persistent. Kamara kept trying to go at him and this defense did not stop I'm starting to see some really good depth pieces here right now behind Greg Gaines you see Sanat but you also have Savassier Dennis there as an MLB too it's not looking too bad for us this weak side dive here ended up going nowhere once again led by Devin White and Levante David started feeling really good here because these A-gap blitzes uh, by our DC are really showing some great results. In this single back bunch left formation here, we again could not stop, did not falter. Later in the game here, as you can see, we only rushed three, but that was enough to force some really bad play. Big interception here by one of our safeties uh, turn this thing around for us. But more and more, as you continue to watch this game, it starts to feel like, is it because of our defense? <laughs> or is it in spite of our offense? Derek Carr here, we didn't really uh, respect him much as we only sent three a couple different times. Just played back, forced him to try to score on us. Uh, the results weren't too bad here. There you go again, sending through the A-gap was a consistent theme here for the defense. Derek Carr trying to get it through. He had a couple different turnovers today, not only uh, through the air, but on the ground. This last play right here really showed what happens uh, when you just let this defense loose. Now let's check out the gameplay for Baker Mayfield in this game. He had plenty of time with this offensive line. He just couldn't get certain things going. I feel like he's trying to go for these home run shots and it's just not working out for the long haul. The uh, scheme, it seems to be pretty strong as we're seeing certain receivers getting open, including tight ends. But Baker just takes his time a little too much. 
I need somebody back there who will let loose and make decisions a whole lot quicker. On this third and goal play here, Baker steps back. And as you can see, that was about three seconds of him just not making a move. He could either cut him through the uh, inside of that line and rush, or he could have just thrown the ball away. But he's making horrible decisions here. Later in this game, we continue to try to put the ball in the hands of Baker. And uh, as you can see, that was the efforts of Mike Evans, not the efforts or accuracy of Baker Mayfield. On this second and 10 here late in the game, Baker throws it off his back foot deep to Russell Gage, and that was all Russell. I've noticed so far in these first two games, Baker does try to go for the deep shot, but he's just waiting a little too long. In that situation there, it was a separation of, of Russell. And there we go again, Baker taking way too long on 3rd and 18. You would think this is over here, but just as we are looking at the craziness of Baker's uh, inconsistency, it's the route running here of Chris Godwin that allows us to convert and pretty much uh, take care of this one. On to week three. Let's see what we got. Week three was a very interesting game. Uh, we recognized a couple different things here, but mainly that I have to keep this defense together. It's a pretty nasty group, and I think if I can continue to reinforce it, we have a great shot. From the start of the whistle here, we just continually saw pressure coming in from all ends with our defense. Vitavea was playing on the outside still. Uh, we have to look at that depth chart and, and kind of ensure that we, we have him playing that rush package in the interior, because I really like Troy Inca and uh, Shaquille Barrett there. That was a defensive turnover. And then we had another one here uh, with Teddy Bridgewater as their quarterback. They did not have Jordan Love as a starter. This is with the 2024 roster. So um, pretty interesting how that worked out. But the bend but not break scenario here, even though we're already up 24-0 here in the second quarter um, is, is incredible continue to look at how we can uh, make that pressure and uh, it's great to see our uh, off-season free agent here Mr. Keely Ringo getting picked up and, and taking a pick six here um, I'm hoping uh, he can kind of continue to move up the depth chart but for now I'm okay with him being that CB2 or CB3 CB2 for the future but CB3 for now blitzes still kept going and Teddy Bridgewater was in pr constant pressure throughout this game. It wasn't until the fourth quarter when we sat our players out that Teddy had some time, but I was really happy with how it was going because even our depth pieces were getting to him in Logan Hall and Anthony Nelson. My hope is that this defense can stay healthy for this long season. Baker had a pretty up and down game despite a comfortable lead led by their defense. I felt that the opposite side was really putting Baker in great opportunities and great field position, but he really wasn't doing much with his arm at certain times. What I did see though is that if we can keep a balanced offense, um, we should have a shot at uh, allowing Baker to be more of a game manager and not putting it all on him. As we recognized the first two games, he'd thrown closer to 80 times. Rakad White is our starting running back. Um, and I think he's played pretty well for us so far. I do feel though it'd be great to have a really nice power back for the future. When you look at Baker's throws here, it's the timing that is going to be crucial. And him holding the ball a little too long creates a lot of those timing issues. Just get the ball out though, I can see him playing very well for us. 
This was another great shot right here, straight for Mike Evans, and I'm hoping that he can continue to trust his receivers to just get open. Uh, but he waits a little too long at times for the window as opposed to anticipating it. This was a great throw here to Chris Godwin, and I couldn't be happier. It was just all openings uh, as the Packers defense was on the field for so uh, long, they were just exhausted. I appreciated the passing. We had one more touchdown here from Baker to Godwin and um, couldn't complain. Sat the rest of our players out. Game was pretty much over. On to week four. Week four was a great barometer for us to gauge where we stood as a team against high caliber uh, franchises. The Kansas City Chiefs are coming off a Super Bowl win and uh, we're definitely focused on how are we going to get better and how will we move forward. The defense is what's propped us up so far during this season and uh, we're going to start there first. Kansas City Chiefs have a very high octane offense and at times this defense looked pretty solid. We saw great pressure going towards uh, Pat Mahomes at some points, but uh, like every great player, you have to uh, make sure that you stop him from the beginning to the end. One great play from your offense doesn't mean that's the end-all be-all. And as you can see here, we uh, did not do well on the first drive. Darius Tony took it to the house. On this shotgun deuce close play, this also showed me that uh, we did uh, have great opportunity the first three games to create fumbles, but here there was just a lot of missed tackles. In this empty bench set here, Pat Mahomes poised in the pocket, able to hit a quick shot here, um, and that's where we take advantage of those hard hits. But every time we had uh, these kind of plays right here, it always led us to some other difficult ones. Travis Kelsey uh, seemed to be open uh, pretty often. For some reason, we just did not have anyone to guard him. A lot of empty bench plays here. And on this one, which looked like a broken play, ended up uh, going for positive 10. Isaiah Pacheco on this run, just taking care of our safety there. And... Um, Again, a lot of missed tackles, a lot of arm tackles we we're recognizing today. Levante David and Devin White played pretty decent at times, but being backed up into a corner uh, quite often definitely showed uh, some concerns here. This was another play to tight end Jody Fortson that an arm tackle is just not going to be enough. right between three defenders there for Travis Kelsey. Very, very rough. These empty bench sets just really created chaos for us. Um, but once he tried to get outside the pocket, I knew we had some opportunity, but we had to get to him. And uh, just throwing these throws on the run, we can get some of these pressures off. We have the opportunity to get some turnovers like we saw here. This was already at the end of the game, and as you can see, we just didn't do much on offense. And having Shaq Barrett guarding Travis Kelsey is not going to be the way. We're definitely going to have to look at some pass coverage linebackers in the future. I watched a lot of tape on Baker Mayfield seemed to be when we had a pretty decent run game to start off these set of downs we were going to be okay but once we got into these third and long situations putting it all on baker mayfield was not good he had probably about six seconds on that play right there and still was able to get sacked on second and nine he throws this shot it looked like to the stands and in the tunnel i, I didn't understand what was going on there with him he missed Mike Evans completely on this throw with easy uh, pass coverage, uh, pass blocking. 
Baker is just very late, probably about a half a second to a full second for making the right decision here. The coverage was, uh, the blocking was perfect for him. He still went out of the pocket and created this big mistake here, a pick by a uh, middle linebacker. On this single back A set here, you have Baker rolling out and again, not making the decision uh, sooner than he needed to. You just saw this over and over where he probably should have sat in the pocket. He went out when he should have probably ran. He didn't. And over and over again, he was just getting sacked or throwing a poor pass. What I'm recognizing uh, more often here is that we just need to take some chances on some other potential prospects because Baker Mayfield just isn't it. It's not like he can't play. It's just that I don't know if he has the qualities. Um, the pressure on the left side too is letting me know that we, we may have to look at uh, some potential uh, trading uh, candidates for the left tackle. Um, is Cody Mock. He did okay in the first three games, but going against some more athletic edge rushers didn't look so good for him here. So we're probably going to start looking at uh, some some potential left tackles for the future. This game was out of hand pretty much by the end of the third quarter. The first two prospects I'll be looking at are quarterbacks. Jordan Love from the Green Bay Packers is actually not being looked at at all in this uh, series. He's number three on the depth chart, and uh, I think he has some qualities we can leverage. Malik Willis is the other quarterback I'm looking at, as he is also number three on the depth chart here for the Tennessee Titans. And I think... Uh, he could be a player that has some rushing capability and will most likely leave the pocket when necessary. Accuracy though, we'll see. The other two candidates are left tackle prospects. First is Jonah Williams, who uh, turned into a left guard as they picked up Orlando Brown. I think we can probably move him back to left tackle, move Cody Mock to left guard. Just gotta see if he's going to make it with us. The other is a backup left tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers in Dan Moore Jr. With them uh, drafting Broderick Jones, I think uh, he could be a guy that we could snag up uh, for cheap and uh, maybe see what he can do for the next three years on his contract. So it's time to make some decisions in the next episode from not only a trade prospect standpoint, but maybe some free signings can occur in the next one. We also have one other big decision to make. We have decided to relocate the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. As we open this door, we have to figure out what will be on the other side and what will we become. If you like what you watched today, please drop a like, leave a comment, tell me what you think, and of course, subscribe to keep up with the series. I really appreciate everyone that stopped by today. Y'all have yourself a good one.